Welcome, everyone. Hope you're not sleepy after lunch. Um, this is my first live presentation in 22 months, so forgive me if I'm a little rusty. My name is Paula Hunter, and I'm the executive director of the Mojaloop Foundation, uh, a new associate member of the Finos organization. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people the last two days about Mojaloop, and I often hear, what is Mojaloop, and I've never heard of it before. So I'm going to go off script a little bit on some of my slides uh, to hopefully give you some background on why we're doing this. So first of all, uh, the why. Why are we developing an open source software stack for the financially uh, underserved? Uh, well, there's opportunity. I mean, there's nearly 2 billion people that lack access to digital financial services, even though most of them have mobile phones. Not smartphones, feature phones, but they have phones. And if we can tap into these individuals and engage them into the digital economy, the impact uh, to the gross domestic product of uh, various countries, in particularly Africa, is in the trillions. So not only does it help the individuals, but it helps the, the local economy. And in order to get that growth, we really need inclusive, open payment systems. We need payment systems that are interoperable across providers. You can't just assume everyone's got the mobile, same mobile network operator or uh, same uh, wallet. Uh, we need instantaneous settlement. Um, people can't afford to wait for their money to, to occur, to, to arrive at their uh, device. We, we want pushed, not pull uh, payments. And we, but we also want to address the concerns and requirements of the local regulators and central banks. Um, and we have to provide uh, varying levels of KYC. So let's make it a little more real. Let's look at Winnie, a shopkeeper. She depends on digital financial services for, for multiple reasons. She has, uh, makes her day-to-day -day income in cash. It isn't, and it's not an option for her to wait for settlement. So she right now cannot use a lot of the digital platforms because there's too, too much of a lag in when she sees the cash on hand. Uh, she also, um, most of the, the, her mobile money account doesn't interoperate with her customers' payment systems. So what happens is she ends up settling for, with cash. And so at the end of the week, she takes her cash. She'll walk two miles, carrying cash, which is not exactly safe, um, and do a cash-in, cash-out transaction where she might pay off a portion of her microfinance loan. She might pay utilities. She might send money to a family member in another country. Problem with that is every time she does a transaction, there's a cost associated with that. Imagine you make $100 a month, and you have to do three or four electronic transactions every month to get bills paid, to send money, et cetera. And the transaction cost could be 8 12%. That's huge when you're making $100 a month. So we've got to reduce the transaction costs and increase the interoperability in order for folks to be able to play in this market. So on the top end of the market, what we need is convenience and innovation to serve uh, the, the small business owners that want to accept digital payments and get out of this cash uh, requirement. Uh, we also want um, folks to be part of the broader digital community. So it's, again, getting those microfinance loans distributed to them via wallet or digitally versus having to go somewhere to get the cash and then go somewhere again to pay off uh, their loans. So how can Mojaloop help? So first and foremost, Mojaloop is an open source software platform. Mojaloop Foundation is a, a 501c nonprofit. I don't sell anything other than... Uh, an, an idea. Um, but we do have a very robust community that has been working on uh, financial inclusion and a Mojalu platform for several years now. It's open source software for instant payment clearing. It connects hub, hub operators, banks, and non-banks 
but not end users. The end user relationship is with the bank, the mobile network operator, the SACO, whoever has that customer relationship. We're the plumbing. Uh, we use a hub managed process to manage all bank account funds and settlement between participants. And we connect, connect to existing infrastructure as required, ACH, cards, point of sale, ATMs, et cetera. We're not trying to replace those technologies. We're trying to coexist and interoperate uh, across these different technologies. Um, it's important to, to emphasize how dependent we are on the open source community for this platform, as you see by some of the logos here. Um, we, we are Linux-based. Uh, we use a number of tools, open source tools, to build out the, the code base. Uh, we're also hosting agnostic. Our development platform today is on AWS. We'll be adding um, Azure as well. What we're finding in, in Africa, in the markets in particular that we're, we're talking to, uh, there's a lot of concern about uh, uh, da data and, and who owns the data. Uh, and data sovereignty. So there's a hesitancy to go cloud-based with these types of offerings in, in those markets. Uh, so what we've been doing is tuning our, our code base so that it can be run in-house, but using the, the cloud platforms for development, pilot projects, proof of concept, sandboxes. Uh, so obviously the cloud uh, reduces barriers to people trying things out and kicking the tires. But in many cases, the central banks are still insistent upon um, hosting their own instances. So what really matters when we think about financial inclusion and digital payments? Uh, I can't emphasize uh, interoperability enough. Um, we, we, you know, we, we see some digital wallets that are um, successful in Africa. M-PESA is probably one of the most uh, successful digital transformations that you'll find on the continent but it requires that you be within that system to exchange money. We want interoperability. We want to make sure that regardless of who your mobile network operator is or your wallet provider or your, your loan provider, that your, your money can flow. Uh, we need the instant push payments that are settled immediately to the, to the uh, recipient's account. Uh, people just can't budget. It, it's, it's one of the reasons why cash remains king, is if they have to wait, then digital provides them with no benefit. Uh, so we have to make sure that the settlements are, are instant. Um, we also want to make sure that at the last mile, the, our ecosystem is uh, innovating, innovating in how they deliver the services out to the customers. Because again, our, you know, us being the plumbing, we're not creating the UI. We're not, we're not managing the relationship with the customer. And so what we need to have, make sure is that we have open APIs that, that drive that innovation. So if you look at it from the, uh, uh, the reference of a stack, Mojaloop provides the rails for uh, connectivity and interoperability, uh, allows the, the uh, bank to establish the rules, uh, the regulatory and governance framework for how, uh, how the, the cash is transferred or the currency is transferred. And then the innovation haps, happens at the apps and account level. Um, there's a lot of, um, still a lot of confusion about open source, uh, particularly in developing countries. And one of the biggest concerns that I hear from solution providers is that we're trying to compete with them, that we're trying to undercut them by offering free software. Well, as I said, I don't, I don't sell anything. Mojaloo Foundation does not um, support or um, or sell any services associated with Mojaloop. It's our ecosystem partners, systems integrators, solutions providers, et cetera, that take the, the, the open source code and implement it um, with, with their bank customers and other service providers. And this is uh, something, um, you know, why open source that is probably not all that new for you, but it really is something that we need to reintroduce over and over again uh, with the folks in developing markets that are as not as familiar as accepting of, of open source uh, that you find here in, in, in New York or US or, or Europe and other developed countries. Um, the lower capital costs up front is really important. In many cases, these countries do not have the cash on hand 
to start a new project. So they might be looking for grant funding. They might look for other uh, partners to provide some, some type of uh, funds to get started. So having an open source platform, cloud-based, they, you know, they can test the tires, they can play with the system, they can play with the sandbox, get a sense for what, um, what the capabilities are of the platform. And as they roll to full migration, they don't have to worry about those licensing fees. And then, of course, the maintenance and, and additional functionality, uh, you all know this is a huge benefit for open source. What we've found is that while we preach this, it doesn't really resonate until they get into the throes of a pilot project or a proof of concept, and they have questions, and they go back to our community. And while they might have a relationship with a systems integrator that's helping them on the deployment, they come to our community, which is hundreds and hundreds of people that are fluent in MojoLoop, and lo and behold, this community is raising the hand to help them, to address their questions, to help them with the, with the, the maintenance and enhancement of, of, the, of the project. So we actually have a product council that collects feedback from customers about the roadmap, the requirements. So again, traditionally, something you're quite familiar in an open source project, but something that um, they, they almost need to experience before they really realize how important this is and how this really frees them up from the vendor lock-in that they've been experiencing. So central banks and governments in particular have been our focus uh, in Africa, Southeast Asia, and, and the like. Uh, and what we've found is that um, they, they are very keen on investing in digital infrastructure projects. Um, and they want to be involved in the discussions of how these, these uh, solutions roll out. In some cases, like we're working with the Bank of Tanzania, the Bank of Tanzania is defining the rules and, and the implementation of MojoLoop in country, and then they're plugging in 40 or 50 other digital financial service providers that will have the customer-facing uh, relationship. But uh, across all of our, our discussions thus far, those central banks are, are critically important. Uh, they're the regulatory bodies that, that uh, ensure this can happen in their country. Um, and so they, um, they are very, very much part of the conversation as we do uh, a Mojo Loop deployment. So now I wanna switch to CBDCs, which was part of the top topic for this uh, session today. Uh, as you all know, there's the interest in CBDCs worldwide is very high. Um, you just this, I can't wait to see this slide updated for 2021. I can't take credit for having prepared it. Um, but even you know, in the last two weeks, I think it was Nairobi we saw that had uh, just announced a new CBDC initiative. But as you see, it's, it's all across the world, there's interest in uh, central bank digital currencies. Uh, and why? Uh, the CBDC reduces the reliance on banks and other finan financial institutions, and it can be a medium that brings in those, uh, those underserved citizens. And, and it, you know, some folks would say, well, that's competitive with the banks. The banks aren't serving these folks today. Um, so it could be a potential opportunity, um, but in, in many cases, it might be just a bypass. The fact that they can't get a bank account um, doesn't mean that they can't possibly trade with CBDCs. Um, it, it can be universally accessible and widely used. One of the things that we see in markets where uh, there are a lot of uh, migrants or refugees is having government, pay government to people payments, GTP, um, implemented via CBDC will be very, a very compelling scenario. I mean, imagine you're in a refugee camp. You don't want to be holding on to a lot of cash. Uh, you do have your phone. There are ways to distribute aid payments via, uh, via CBDC um, that would reduce those, those uh, fears and concerns with trading in cash. Um, and, you know, while cash is still king in many of the markets that we're talking uh, to, another reason why CBDCs are, are of interest is in addition to aid payments and, and distributing to, out to the citizens uh, different types of payments from the government, you know, cash is, is unsafe. Not only can you, you know, be robbed of your cash, but, it, you know, in the times of COVID, 
fewer and fewer people want to process cash, want to handle cash. Uh, so that's another factor that is, is driving government's interest in rolling out CBDCs. So what, what's the Mojaloop Foundation doing about it? Okay, so we've got the Mojaloop Project, an open source project. Uh, we've been working on that for about four years now. And we have uh, a handful of deployments that are underway in Tanzania, Mowali, um, Orange, and MTN have an instance that they're, they're testing out in Egypt and other countries. Uh, as you can imagine, the sales cycle on this type of deployment is pretty long and complex, particularly when you, you add in the fact that many of these countries need investment. They need grants to, to move these projects forward. So in parallel to that, uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore came to us and said, we like the, the rails that you're designing here. We like the fact that you're open source. We'd like to work on some initiatives to move uh, CBDCs forward in developing uh, countries. So you know, Singapore obviously uh, demonstrates great leadership and innovation in the regulatory space. It's not for the, you know, the benefit of their, their, their citizens that they're doing this. It's for the broader populace. I mean, even when you think about um, you know, currency exchanges, they have a lot of uh, individuals from like the Philippines that were our guest workers in Singapore. They want to send money home. And that requires a cash-in, a currency conversion. Again, that transaction fees just start racking up. So um, they've, they came to us and said, let's... Let's start uh, working on this, focusing first on wholesale um, and then longer term potentially on retail. Uh, in parallel, uh, Mass launched uh, a retail CBDC hackathon and a challenge uh, this year um, in partnership with Asian Development Bank, the IMF, and many other uh, large global institutions. Um, there were 300 submissions. 15 finalists, and of the 15 finalists, uh, three of them are using Mojaloop. And what we did was we created a sandbox for folks to kick the tires and play with Mojaloop. Um, we're using Apex. I don't know if any of you are from, anyone familiar with Apex? Yes? No? Um, uh, that came out of uh, collaborations with Mass and other Asian-based uh, organizations, and it's a platform for testing out APIs. So we have, um, we have created a sandbox on, on Apex for folks to, to uh, uh, use Mojaloop. And three of the finalists in the Global Challenge actually used uh, Mojaloop as part of their underpinnings, um, including uh, the ANZI Banking Group in Australia, Sormatsu in Switzerland, and the Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, so it was reaffirming that our, our technology is sound and that it does have relevancy for CBDC. But what we need to do now is really define this project more specifically. So um, uh, I am actually getting ready to hire uh, individuals in Singapore that are gonna run our CBDC initiative. It's completely open source and transparent. Anyone can join the project and participate in the project. And there's three areas that we're gonna focus on. Uh, domestic clearing with settlement in CBDC, using Mojaloop as the central uh, clearing system with settlement via external, external CBDC, Domest domestic issuing and clearing of CBDC, uh, providing uh, account-based wholesale CBDC, and cross-border payments, test the use of whole wholesale CBDC uh, with multiple currencies and disparate networks. Uh, if you were to ask me for more detail on those three bullets, I'd say when I hire my first person, that, that person will be gladly to answer that question. So it's a brand new project. Um, just talked about it earlier this week at the Sim Singapore FinTech Festival. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm hiring a, a director to, to lead the project, uh, a technical lead to, uh, lead to lead the technical aspects of the project, and we'll open the doors and welcome any and all that want to participate and collaborate on that. Um, so there are some of you here at the conference that I've already talked to that are interested in this. Uh, again, our focus is wholesale right now. Uh, a couple of years from now, hopefully, we'll, be, we'll, we'll pivot to retail. But right now, we really want to uh, make sure that we uh, address uh, the, the needs on the wholesale side. 
Uh, so one of the things that we're going to be doing um, in 2022 uh, is starting pilot projects. Uh, so we're really keen to pick a couple of countries where we, we test out uh, some of these technologies. We'll also be hosting financial inclusion workshops and hackathons. Uh, so MAS sponsored the retail hackathon that happened this summer. We will, we will do joint hackathons with MAS that are focused on, on horizontal. And then we will also be developing a CBDC toolkit. Again, we're, we're going to be working with MAS and other uh, experts in this area to uh, help those developing countries roll out CBDC. So um, as far as the Mojo Foundation is concerned, you know, we really want to build out this, this ecosystem that benefits, benefits everyone. As I mentioned, we don't have a relationship with the end user, but our work hopefully has an impact on their, on their inclusion in the financial uh, sector. Uh, we're very keen on the merchants being able to tap into our rails, governments, central banks, and, and fintechs. So there's plenty of opportunity. And while in, in some of these developing countries, the, the governments may not have the funds and on hand to fund these projects, there are many uh, philanthropic organizations and NGOs out there that are writing grants for these type of deployments. Um, we're starting a deployment in Rwanda right now that has been, uh, there's been funds allocated to that from external parties. So we're not asking people to do pro bono work on the implementation and deployment. Obviously, open source, we want to see people contributing. But it, when it comes to the, the hard work, not, not that open source development isn't hard, but <laughs> uh, when it comes to the work of integrating and implementing these projects, we, we uh, recognize that systems integrators and other solution providers need to be at the table and need to be, have tap into those funds. They can't just allocate precious resources to do that kind of work for free. Um, so there is, there is money in the system to help uh, bootstrap these, these implementation projects. Um, but it's a, a, a more complicated sales cycle than a traditional uh, sales cycle in a, in a more developed market because there's other players that we have to bring into the deals uh, to secure those funds. As far as the community is concerned, um, we currently have uh, over, well over 1,000 participants um, and we're growing that base. Uh, the the Mojuloop project, the open source project, actually started about four years ago when the Gates Foundation fund specific companies like Coil, Ripple, Modusbox, and others to, to write the, basic, the base code. Um, so over the course of those three, three and a half, four years, this developer community started to grow. I was fortunate to be able to meet with them a few times on the ground in, in, um, in Africa before uh, COVID uh, erupted. Um, but we have a really passionate group of individuals that are supporting, um, supporting this, this initiative. And it's, it's really very distributed around the world. Um, we obviously, Africa uh, is, is our, our focal point for deployments. Other developing countries like Myanmar, Philippines, um, and, and Indonesia are, are also important to us. Uh, but the community is much broader than that. The community that's contributing is literally all over the world. So what I've done is kind of given you enough to be dangerous, right, about when talking about Mojaloop. Um, if you want to learn more about what is Mojaloop, what, is it, what kind of services does it offer, how, do, how does it uh, deliver instant interoperable payments, I'd encourage you to download our executive briefing white paper, which kind of goes to a much uh, more detail than what I've provided here today. Um, and then we're, we welcome you to participate in our community work. Um, if you are interested in the, in the project, we're, it's all of our repositories are up on GitHub. We have a pretty active Slack channel. Um, and of course, we're always looking for new members that want to participate in our governance and, and operations of the foundation itself. We're young. We've, we were launched as a, as a nonprofit last May. Um, we have a small team distributed around the world. Um, but we're always looking for more people to participate, provide input, uh, and engagement. So with that, I think I have a little time for questions. Any from the room? Do you have any um, projects going on in the U.S.? In the U.S.? 
No, uh, not at this time. Really, all of our, our focus has been um, Africa and Southeast Asia. Oh. Other questions? Oh, I see one up there. We're coin agnostic. Uh, we, don't, we don't care what flows through our pipes. <laughs> so what we want to make sure, again, open, interoperable. So whether it be uh, crypto, CBDC, or any type of currency, uh, we, we are, we're the pipes. Other questions, comments? It's, it's, a, it's a big shift. Um, you know, as I mentioned, cash is king right now. But um, there are trusted relationships in markets. So, for example, as I mentioned, MTN and Orange, big mobile network operators in, in Africa. And what they've done is rolled out services that allow citizens to send money abroad. Um, so, for, so getting people accustomed to very specific use cases that are meaningful for, to them. Because what you find it's not just Singapore and Philippines, there's Hong Kong and Philippines, um, Myanmar, and in places where there's either large refugee or um, uh, migrant populations, being able to knit together their transactions is, is a very discreet exercise that um, can really reduce cost for them, those transaction costs. But that's, you know, that's part of the, res the remit of, you know, the MTNs and the oranges and, and the folks that are, have the relationship with that individual. Um, but if we can, again, reduce the transaction costs and increase the interoperability, we can start shifting people's behavior um, in that regard. Sometimes the, the, the reticence to use digital right now is the lack of interoperability and the costs. So we need to, we need to address both. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. If you do it again. It's early, um, in part because we only have a handful of deployments that are, that are underway. But as I said, as they get um, indoctrinated in our community, um, I know Mowali in particular um, was one that's a joint venture between Orange and MTN. They had specific requirements, so they did some development and now want to give it back. So I, I think it takes them a little while uh, to get comfortable. Uh, it used to be we had face-to-face -face community meetings four times a year, so there was an opportunity to bring those customers in and have them meet the people that, um, that are working on the code base and strengthen those bonds and, and a sense of contribution. The other thing that we're, we're working with folks that are granting funds for infrastructure projects to ensure that when they grant funds, they stipulate that if there's any new development, it needs to be given back to the community. Because you know these big aid or organizations would rather not fund the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so that's a, you know, a good carrot or an incentive for people to contribute back. But it, it's, it's still a bit early. And again, their understanding the open source way is is um, not as sophisticated as the folks in this room. So it, it's a learning experience. I find myself repeating messages that I used to give 10 years ago here in, here in the States. So um, it'll take some time. Other questions? My email is phunter at mojuloop.io. Um, probably should have put it on the slide. Um, but I, I welcome you to reach out to me um, and, and um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments or thoughts, um, we're happy to have them. All right, thank you.